I think what struck me was just the high number of casualties. About 20,000 killed on the first day, and another 40,000 wounded. That's just the British Army. The battle went on for a number of months until November 1916, and it just sort of petered out. But hundreds of thousands of people by that point had died. My name is Joe Sacco and I'm a cartoonist. I just completed a book called The Great War, which is a fold-out illustration that goes on for about 24 feet and depicts the first day of the Battle of the Somme. The Battle of the Somme was fought in the summer of 1916 in World War I. I mean, overall, it turned out to be a disaster for the British. has various reference materials. What I did is I went to the Imperial War Museum in London, and they have a great photo archive there. I'd get these very large volumes, and I would just photocopy things I wanted. It sort of showed me how things are done. I mean, what you're looking for, or what I was looking for, is these little details. I, I didn't really know how things are stacked up, or how soldiers, how they're passing shells to each other. There are a lot of different ways, but these photographs gave me some ideas. I wanted to sort of view it as if you're looking at the world from above, somehow removed, and you're just observing what's going on without uh, being told what's going on. This allowed me to just sort of think things through myself or experience different things at different times as I, as I was drawing. And you begin to think of what a, an amazing human endeavor war is. And you begin to think about how that's where humanity really puts its efforts. And you, you show the enthusiastic soldiers going to the trenches, you know, waving at the cameras. And you think of them as individuals, because when you're drawing them, you have to think of them as individuals. Every soldier you draw, you kind of think to yourself, okay, this one had a mother, you know, this one had a sweetheart. Everyone has a story when you're drawing them because you want to personalize them. And so you give them a life somehow, then you carry them into the trenches and you take them over the top and then you kill them off. And you're thinking about all that stuff. It's, it's an interesting procedure, this book here. This is the one that I read when I was a kid. I mean, just looking at these pictures, they sort of stuck in your head, these weird vehicles and flamethrowers and gas, you know, the idea of gas warfare just... And, you know, I was reading about stuff like No Man's Land. When you're a kid, that just sounds so strange. You take it very literally when you're a kid. When you're older, it just rolls off your tongue. But when you're a kid, no man's land, what does that literally mean? It literally, literally means no man lives in this area. For me, it represents the, the moment where industrialism really overtakes the human aspect. I mean, most people were killed not in with bayonets, they were killed by machine gun fire and especially by artillery fire. It's just a shocking battle, really in terms of the loss of life in a very short time. 10,000 British soldiers were killed in the first hour. I'm interested in, in that moment. The moment they went over the top, they lined up, and suddenly they just started getting cut down. It, it must have been something that they could not have imagined. They, they really went into the, the jaws of death. I spent time with troops in Iraq, with American Marines, and what, what I remember most of that about that is that 
they didn't talk about the bigger picture so much. They were really concerned about themselves and about their friends. They were concerned about, we're going to get everyone home. But I thought of those things when I was showing the soldiers marching together. You're aware that a lot of these soldiers knew each other and were friends. It's something you're thinking about when you're drawing. How that informs the piece itself, it's, it's very hard to put my finger on it, but I know it's there somehow. The question of why we do these things to each other is the one that does interest me. I, I want to explore it less as a journalist now and more as an artist. And I think that's what this project means to me. I was actually able to approach it as an artist, to think of it as an artist. It's the first time I've really allowed myself that. And maybe it's freed something up in me. And uh, I'm not sure where my future work's gonna go, but I think this, uh, this book helped move it in that direction, whatever direction that is.